There are also life jackets above your head on either side of the boat. Now we've never had to use our life jackets. They are there just in case. But do try and remember you're not the only person on the boat. Have a look around you before you stand up. Make sure you're not going to be putting your head or your arm into anyone else's. hang around for very long because we will find another saltwater crocodile before this cruise is over. We're harassing him enough and I guarantee before this cruise is finished you will have that curve coming up both on the left and out towards the front on the right. These are magpie geese and we'll talk a little bit more about them later on. Juvenile sea eagle flying just off there to your left hand side. You can see the bird with environmental significance but also its cultural significance. So, because of this, the culture you can tell that cantilevered because they have a very short neck. Yeah, yeah. Very short neck on the cantilevered and they have that brilliant orange head. Here's this light brown bird with that long yellow feather on its wing. We'll also see the wandering whistling duck which is a lot darker in colour and has a little short golden feather. Quite flexible muscles and different types of cartilage in his neck. So he can flick his head over his back and then send it forward with such force that he can catch the fish on his very sharp bill. So he'll actually spear the fish straight through the middle. So this is the male data, much blacker in colour. The female is quite light and has a, a white belly and a white neck. So have a funny characteristic. These guys actually wade around in the weeds, get it all caught on their feet, and they'll bring their foot up to their mouth and eat over their own feet. So you have both types of whistling duck there. You can see it's lighter brown with that long golden feather. They're the plumed whistling duck. They're both white-bellied sea eagles, I'm pretty sure. Hang on a minute, that one down the bottom doesn't look like a sea eagle. Some colour, you can see where he's getting that real whiteness to his chest. That's what I was looking for on that one, the one who flew away but didn't see it. So,
This bird's a funny little bird. So it's doing all of this, looking after the babies, looking after the eggs. The female's off getting herself another mate. Oh, right over. Freshwater crocodiles, it's two actually facing each other. At this time of the year, they're all very competitive. The crocodiles have come in from the smaller billabongs that are starting to dry up. So they're becoming quite active. So we've got one on either side of the boat. So you can see those bumps on the top of his head. Oh, he and you can also see that quite square <laughs> snout. It's very typical of a saltwater crocodile. He's in an awful hurry because he wants to fight the other crocodile on the other side of the boat. So we'll let him swim around. It's much more exciting if they uh, fight. So we'll see if he wants to go around and have a bit of a look at this guy. Jabiru is actually a Portuguese word, not a Jabiru, uh, not a Aboriginal word like many people think, and it means uh, stalk, which is very handy because that's what it is. It's a stalk. Now this is the male stalk or black neck stalk. Has a really dark black eye, whereas the female has quite a yellow eye. Birds. These ones hang out in groups of three, so it's always two females with one male. Now this male, he's a pretty clever guy. He's convinced both of his girlfriends to lay eggs in the same nest. That way he only has to incubate one nest instead of two. So when the eggs hatch, they'll actually raise them in their, in their trio, their group of three, and that helps for added protection. It's quite dangerous out here with crocodiles, sea eagles, all those sorts of things. He's got a muddy head though, must have been playing in the mud. I just ask that you all remain seated while we come into the dock, please.
Refueling at Tennant Creek. <laughs> 